Now let's talk about the commerce side of this business. So you you know you've you're new to this industry. You've bought some animals, or you've you know got some animals on the property when you fenced it, and now you're looking to make a little bit of money. Um, so the the two ways that I'm familiar with is obviously running some sort of hunting operation, and the and the second one is uh, selling the animals in um, in auctions as as you would do with you know kind of traditional livestock. Am I missing anything? No, you, you, okay. that's that's primarily the industry and and. You know, when we first started, my goal was to have a hunting operation. Yeah. And we had hunters out here and, you know, it was every weekend. It was a very demanding thing having and, and having people on the ranch, the liability of having people on the ranch. And after a few years, we decided that was not our forte anymore. And we decided that we were going to limit our hunting to our family and nothing commercial. But we were going to breed strictly to sell to other ranches for, as breeding stock. Um, one of the things that, that people run into, and, and I think some of the pitfalls, if we want to talk about that sure. a minute, is that they, they, they think that they're going to come out, put up a high fence, buy a couple of animals, and they're going to start doing something immediately. My suggestion is on that is to you know get your get all your 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 business plan yeah. made. How about a business plan, right? And we'll talk. You know, yes, we sir. do business plans right. for for other other people, and uh, we had a business plan, and it and you know a business plan is is nothing more than a guideline that you have and a goal that you want to achieve, and in, in the first year, the second, fifth year, you know, and and I would say that you got to be prepared to make absolutely no money your first four or five years. Okay. If you don't have the outlay of capital and everything to be able to do that, then you're, you're really, you're getting into the wrong business. Yeah, and it's almost like any startup, right? You, not every startup, you just immediately start cash flowing. So uh, it taken a few years to get going. What's the, what, what are the reasons why? Is it? Well, first off, you, you know, <laughs> When I built, the, when we first high fenced 20 years ago, um, we were paying right at 350 to five dollars a foot okay. to, to put this fence. just for your labor on the fencing. That didn't include your water gaps, didn't include your gates, yep. or any of that. Now that was three to five dollars a foot. Now you put that on a, um, a mile, 5,280 yeah. feet. It'll add up. That's that was even those days was over thir almost thirty thousand dollars. Sure. Today it is probably quadrupled. Yeah. And you get into some of these hill country ranches where the, the this mountainous area that you see around us wow. out here, the price of poker goes up considerably. I mean, it uh, people are getting anywhere from 15, 20, and sometimes $30 a foot. A foot. To, to build wow. fences over these these hills. So infrastructure cost, especially infrastructure if Infrastructure is it. terrible. Yeah. And, and, and like I said, over 20 years, I have built I've built the infrastructure that I have. Uh, we used to be in the whitetail breeding business, so I still have all my deer pens uh, and my handling facilities for the whitetail, but I'm no longer in the whitetail business. I, I, I saw the writing on the wall with that and, and the root regulations that were under Parks and Wildlife, and I got out of the whitetail business. So now I'm using those pens for other things. And uh, the barn, the handling facilities are still good. I mean, they're still, we use those to operate on. Uh, that is expensive. I mean, to be, everything you see out here is, is literally, I'd like to have the money back that I spent, you know, yeah. uh, setting the infrastructure of this ranch up. Right. And hopefully uh, my kids and my grandkids will carry on this and, and keep the, the, uh, the ranch, the upkeep on it is, yes, is, is expensive as well. Yep. And uh, so that's that's it's just cost a lot and so um some ways that people um so you know let's get back to the commerce side so you you can run a hunting operation or some flavor of hunting operation and this is where you know you you probably need some lodging um so sometimes the ranches of course have it sometimes you have to you have to put up the money for that um you got to have you know chefs and meals and drinks and people helping you out then you've got to have this, you know, sort of the deer stands or the ways to get out in the field to, to take these animals. Um, and so I think, you know, kind of set that aside. How about when you're going to go the live sell or you're going to go the auction route with your, with your hoof stock, how do you, how do you move these deer? How do you work these deer? 
when we move these animals, if, if say for example, we're selling to other ranchers and, by, and that's called private treaty where we're not going through a public auction. Okay. We, uh, we sometimes, like I mentioned with the Gemsbach and even our scimitar horns, we find it easier to chemically immobilize them, to tranquilize them with a drug that we get from our veterinarian. Yeah. Uh, now like the Axis and Black Buck, uh, some of our bigger bucks, we will dart those as well and chemical immobilize them. Uh, does and younger bucks and things like that, we run them in, we catch them in our tra catch pen and then we can run them into the barn and live load them onto the trailer. Okay. So that's how we move that. Now, when I mentioned uh, chemical immobilization, um, yeah, we're, we're talking about going to well, a veterinarian. You're, you're going to have to have that is these are these are Schedule Three drugs okay. that you're using. You have to have a veterinarian prescribe those, and you're not just going to one day buy some animals and go to your vet, get a dart gun and go to your vet and get a, a prescription for those drugs. He's not going to write you a prescription. He has you have to develop that rapport with that vet. He needs to come out and do a ranch inspection, which I've had uh, several times. Our vet comes out every so often and he uh, looks at the herd. He knows how the numbers I have. And so he knows that if I'm asking for a, 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 a drug kit, that that will take care of the animals I have. If I were to all of a sudden start asking for 10 drug kits, He's gonna, that's gonna raise a suspicion and a red flag to him. And he's probably not gonna write me that prescription until he finds out why I need Why those. you need to, yeah. And, the, and here's the, the misnomer, and I, I wanna dwell just a little bit on the drugs, is that when you do get a prescription for those drugs, <clears throat> you can't have, you, those drugs have to be prescribed to you, to the ranch, and whether you're letting somebody else dart your animals, yeah. or whether you're doing it yourself, they have to be in your name, the ranch name and the species you're darting okay. or, or immobilizing. This is very important, right? It's so extremely if... important or you're, you're committing a felony oh. if you don't. In other words, if you hire a, a, a third party to come out, dart your animals for you, they use their drugs and all that, that is an That's absolute no-no and it's a criminal offense. So know your drug laws, know, uh, you know, talk to somebody that can help you through that. And my suggestion when people come in uh, and ask me about uh, what should I do as far as now I, I, buying a dart gun? I'll tell them don't. 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 No. Okay. You know, don't buy that dart gun until you have have had an opportunity to work with some people that know what they're doing, and are doing it legally. And uh, so that'd be the my suggestion is don't get into that end of it until you're ready to capture, and then hire the. We've got several. You know, in in just in this local area here, there's several traders and trappers, trappers that that are very legitimate they know how to do it and they know the laws and they're very careful with your animals so i would suggest that would be my suggestion first off is hire the services okay. of a good tra trapper okay so or use your veterinarian to or do use that. your veterinarian yeah okay and then um uh some of the stuff that you that we may see on social media where the guys are in the helicopters and they're hanging out and they're shooting the net guns. I know a lot of that is, you know, West Texas and Well, out they, there, they do that a lot right here. Now some on of the, the bigger on, ranches. On the bigger ranches, it, it's yeah. great on these small ranches. Well, like for example, I would, there's no way in this, uh, in my scimitar horn pen, which is about 10 acres, there's no way that I'd let them come in with a helicopter and you'd, you'd kill everything in here, sure. running them into the fence. Okay. Yeah. But that is a very uh, a, a great way to catch a lot of animals in a short amount of time. Okay. And and if you've got experienced uh, operators and and trappers, um, I I can't say enough about how the 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 ability that especially in these these mountainous areas and and real rugged terrain that is probably the only way you're going to catch some of those animals. Yeah. We've talked about the hunting. We've talked about the um, uh, the capture. Now now you're potentially entering your animals into an auction. Um, if you're going to go the public auction route, yeah. you do the same. Basically, now the trend today is that there's still a few what I call live auctions where the animal is actually there and run through a ring like right. you would. That's not as popular anymore, though. It's not as popular anymore. Uh, the video auctions are really becoming popular, and also yeah. online bidding sure. uh, is is extremely uh, popular. And um, you do the videos through either video or through uh, photography, photos of the animal that you're purchasing. 
And then normally the, under the terms and conditions, most of those auctions have a, a time limit that of, of, well, for example, the EWA was 60 days 60 to days. deliver that animal. Um, other than that, um, I, I like the private, I like private treaty auctions myself. Okay. Uh, you're going to pay a commission on any public auction, sure. but I recommend a public auction to our new members and our new people that are coming into the industry. Uh, and the reason I recommend that is because they may not have the clientele. Right. That And so that, you put your animals out there, people, after you've done that several, they get to know who you are, they get to know the, the quality of animal that you have, and so then you can turn to private treaty and they'll be calling you for private treaty sales. And okay. you don't, you're not paying a commission to the auction company. But either way, that's, uh, that, that's the two ways of, of selling your animals, sure. is either private treaty or uh, public auction. Okay.